Welcome to another set of part one questions. If you've already worked through these questions on your own, we're ready to go over the answers. First question, what organism causes Hansen disease? What animal serves as the reservoir for this organism in the U.S., and where in the body does this organism live? So Hansen disease is also known as leprosy, which is caused by Mycobacterium leprae. The animal reservoir in the U.S. is the armadillo, and then M. leprae likes to live in the coolest parts of the body, which tend to be the skin and the superficial nerves. Next, what is BNP and how is it useful in cases of heart failure? BNP is B-type natriuretic peptide, or brain natriuretic peptide. It's a hormone that's stored in the ventricular myocardium, and it's released when the myocytes are excessively stretched, such as when ventricular diastolic pressure rises. So BNP levels in the blood will be elevated in heart failure. And it's useful as a diagnostic test. The patient comes in with shortness of breath, and you're not sure if they're in heart failure or they're having a COPD exacerbation, for example. A high BNP might help you confirm the diagnosis of heart failure. Next, a nine-year-old child is brought into the clinic for evaluation of a right wrist drop and confusion. Physical exam reveals a bluish line on the gingivae. So there's your diagnostic giveaway. These blue lines on the gums are called lead lines. So what peripheral smear finding is consistent with lead poisoning? We're going to look for basophilic stippling within the red blood cells. Lead inhibits the degradation of rRNA. So you get all this rRNA hanging around, and these ribosomes all clump together, and they show up as little basophilic dots in the cytoplasm of the red cells. And then what's the treatment for lead poisoning? You'd either use EDTA or succimer if lead chelation is needed. And in children with severe lead intoxication, you could use dimercaprol plus succimer. Next, a 62-year-old man complains of weak urine stream and hesitancy when trying to urinate. His physician prescribes finasteride. So how does this agent treat benign prostatic hyperplasia? Well, finasteride is a drug that inhibits the enzyme 5-alpha reductase, which is the enzyme that converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, which is a super potent form of testosterone. Testosterone and dihydrotestosterone generally make prostate tissue grow. So if you have less dihydrotestosterone, the BPH won't progress so quickly. Next, a kidney transplant patient begins to experience renal failure seven years after receiving her kidney transplant. What type of rejection is this, and how is it mediated? So based on the time frame, this is chronic rejection, which is caused by T-cell and antibody-mediated vascular damage, resulting in an obliterative vascular fibrosis. So you're obliterating the vasculature, you're fibrosing the vasculature. Uh, you have fibrosis of the graft tissue, fibrosis of the blood vessels, and this is mediated by T-cells and antibodies. Next, what test is used to detect corneal abrasions? So you're going to place some fluorescein dye on the surface of the eye, and you examine the eyes under a black light. If you see any pooled areas of fluorescein, that indicates an abrasion or an ulcer or some type of defect in the cornea. Next, what physiology accounts for the automaticity of the AV and SA nodes? So gradually increasing sodium channel conductance results in slow, spontaneous depolarization of the membrane potential during diastole. Then once a certain threshold is reached, an action potential is generated. Next, what is p-value? Who loves statistics? Me neither. p-value is the probability that a study's results occurred by chance alone. So a very small p-value indicates that it's very unlikely that the study values occurred as a result of chance all by itself. So what's an acceptable p-value? We designate a p-value less than 0.05 as the cutoff for determining whether or not it's reasonable to reject the null hypothesis. So if the p-value is less than 0.05, we say that the difference between the two experimental groups is statistically significant. And we're going to talk more about p-value in part two of the course. Next, a patient with an epilepsy diagnosis is pregnant with her first child. She's concerned that her child may also have seizures. So what are the most common causes of seizures in children? Let's think about genetic causes, febrile seizures from infection, trauma, and metabolic causes. Now in adults, the main causes of seizure are brain tumors, trauma, stroke, and infection. And in the elderly, it's the same basic thing, it's just a slightly different order. You have stroke, brain tumors, trauma, metabolic causes like hyponatremia, and then infections. Next, which diuretics lower serum calcium levels? These are the loop diuretics, like furosemide. There's a mnemonic that says loops lose calcium, thiazides retain calcium. So what's the mechanism by which these cause hypocalcemia? Well, loop diuretics act in the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle, where they inhibit the sodium-potassium chloride co-transporter. Then calcium is reabsorbed passively, not using a transport protein, but paracellularly between the cells of the loop of Henle. And that's driven by this electrochemical gradient. 
but when you block the reabsorption of sodium and chloride with a loop diuretic, that's going to disrupt this electrochemical gradient and reduce calcium reabsorption. So that leads to loss of calcium in the urine and potentially some hypocalcemia. All right, that's it for this question set. I'll see you next time.